I'm really excited. I, I do believe we will have a cure for Duchenne. I really do believe that. Um, I think it's just a matter of when right now. And I guess you could put semantics on, you know, what exactly does a cure mean? But to me, um, the ability to live a fairly normal life and, you know, get married and have kids, um, that to me is, is good enough for a cure. And I think that what we're seeing now with gene therapy gives me enough hope that it's going to happen. I'm not saying this first generation of gene therapy um, is, is going to be it. Um, I'm very curious to see how CRISPR will affect it because with CRISPR, you're instead of replacing, you know, with a, a microdystrophin, um, which is a very trun truncated protein, you're actually um, correcting the mutation at the DNA level. And, you know, if this does prove to be safe and effective, then that could be a real game changer. Um, so having said that, um, I have a lot of hope for all of the gene therapies, gene editing, um, a lot to learn on the gene editing, obviously. But what keeps me awake at night is, let's say we have this cure, which is so exciting. I can't imagine anything worse for a family, for a parent, to know that this is available to some kids, but not to my child. And so for me, that is the most important thing right now. We as an organization at Cure to Shen are planning for success. We're planning for these, these therapies to be successful. And therefore, what do we have to do to make sure that they realize their, their full promise? And that means in terms of you know, increasing effectiveness, but also ensuring that they're gonna be available to all, all patients. And that means, um, you know, obviously the manufacturing issues are, are really key, but really drilling down to how are we gonna overcome the fact that many of these kids, young adults especially, um, have pre-existing antibodies to these therapies because of the AAV that's, that's being used to deliver it. And um, will it last forever? And if it doesn't, um, you know, how are we gonna redose when you already have an immune response to that particular AAV? So looking at you know, different ways of you know, different AAVs um, is, is very important. And ultimately, there is muscle turnover. So to really cure this, we're gonna have to address and target um, the satellite, the muscle satellite cells. And so you know, how, do we, how do we do that? Because none of these therapies right now um, really address the, the satellite cells. And then there is, um, you know, just the overall issues of, of, you know, the delivery and, you know, how expensive it is. And so we actually are, are going about it again in a very business-like manner in terms of looking at the landscape of what are all of these potential, what are all the problems right now with, with the delivery, basically, and, you know, what are the different ways that we can address it. And so last year we funded another company called 4D Molecular Therapeutics, which it's pretty cool. They are... Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do justice to the technology, but they're basically doing um, um, computer modeling to create you know, just thousands and thousands of synthetic AAV um, vectors that the body you know, has not seen yet and so might possibly not have an immune reaction. Plus, in the process, they're really targeting certain organs so that the uptake will be much more efficient and um, which in turn would not only be better for the patient, you know, and helping more, but it would also reduce the cost of delivering gene therapy, which is gonna become very, very important. Um, we're also looking at some other, other ways. Um, I can't, it's, next year at this time, I can tell you a little bit more, but looking at other ways to, to do workarounds and so that we can actually realize the promise of gene therapy.